We are talking today with um, two faculty members in theater arts, um, Lois Arthur and Paul Kalina, and then also with our friend um, Miriam Alarcon Avia, who um, is a local artist and activist uh, and has been part of some Oberman events in the past as well. So, and I think both Lois and Paul, you've, you've done Oberman related things. So, so we're all family. Um, so today we're talking about masks and um, all three of these people have uh, different relationships, working knowledge, uses of masks that I hope we'll get into at various times. But um, I asked Lois if, if you would start us off on, on kind of some historical context. Sure. So there you, you can, if you look at the history of masks, you can go back to ancient cultures and the use of the mask. And the use of the mask in ritual ways in order to connect with the spirits, with the other, with the gods, um, with the world beyond what human beings could understand, um, but knew that they needed that connection or wanted to preserve that connection. Um, uh, I, so those ritual masks were always assumed by um, ritual performers who usually had to be initiated into the wearing and the performance of the mask. Um, when it comes to some of the African mask traditions that I've looked at, um, there's always protections. You keep away from the mask maker. Um, there was one set of masks um, in, uh, they were um, Sunufo masks in West Africa, where the mask actually came in from the bush. So they were never stored in the community. They were always stored outside. And when the mask came in, it came in from the bush. It had to be invited in um, with protections and then it had to be escorted out. So the idea that there was something dangerous happening with that mask at the same time that you were bringing it in in a ritual for healing or for some kind of communication with this, <clears throat> excuse me, with this other world. Um, and so you always had that sense of mystery about the mask. Um, they, you always had this inner relationship where you knew that the person in the mask was human, but they were also not human at the same time. Um, and that they were something else. And so uh, that became that interesting connection that then bled into um, theater traditions and storytelling. Um, now there's a connection between that storytelling also and these ritual masks because often there was a story being enacted and you had to understand who the character of this mask was, even if it was a ritual mask, and how you behaved as an audience member, how you interacted with it. Um, and then that sort of just bled into other practices of in Greek mass traditions and theater traditions, you had one performer and they played all the parts and so they had mass to switch to the different um, characters. Uh, in medieval times, um, the mumming traditions where people were masked, uh, this feeds into the Halloween traditions where uh, people do mischief. Um, and if there was someone that the town wanted to punish, people in masks would come and torment them and knock on their doors. Or if you wanted to get rid of the, um, the spirits at New Year's, those spirits that you needed to leave once again, or on All Saints, All Souls Day, on Halloween, which is supposed to be a liminal time when these demons can cross over, you had these masked figures to chase these things out of the town. Um, so you started to have all of that, and then that interacting again, overlapping with theater traditions, because in the early theater where the church decided 
wait a minute, we want to take over these pagan traditions and use them in order to um, spread, spread their doctrine, then you had saints masks, which were very um, stoic and um, didn't show any emotion, whereas the demon masks and the devil masks were <laughs> the ones that were wild and crazy and dangerous. Um, and that then feeds into the Commedia tradition of masks. So in, in this, um, I think there is this, this idea of this world of these ritual masks, but they then overlap in really interesting ways pretty early on with storytelling and that storytelling leading into theater and performance and entertainment. But at the same time, um, the, even if you go back to Greek times, the in the comedies with those masks that allowed those performers to do really outrageous things um and so that idea that uh a mask is not necessarily benign <laughs> it can be used to really say things that people um uh might not be able to say as their their real selves or um, want to hear or want to hear yeah yeah both yeah, yeah which, which makes me think of um the the use of anonymous the political messaging mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. the kind of mischief making and yeah yep, the yeah the guy fox character yeah. that then mm -hmm. became this figure yeah um but paul you want to pick up a little bit on Commedia, and then some of the other later traditions of masks and neutral masks, which is also an interesting. That's a whole, yeah, another <laughs> world. Go on and on. Um, yes. Well, I just think, you know, I think the part that you brought up, um, you know, the mask helps, uh, helps us to, to tell a story, but also for people to hear the story. Because the mask is also, so it does so many things but it also removes the performer by one, right? So we can look at mask performance, and this is where the Commedia I think, was so successful, is that we can look at them and they can do, the performers can do outrageous, say the most outrageous things, even things that are perhaps almost um, sacrilege, um, because we'll accept it because it's that character. Whereas if we look at plays and we see plays where, oh, I, 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 that's me, we can identify and see me. If I'm wearing a comedian mask, well, that's not really me, right? And it's not like really anybody I know, even though it's human, it's kind of, you know, Arlecchino kind of is based on the, on the monkey as well. So mm, it's not really me. And so they can do really outrageous things and we can accept it so we can hear. The audience tends to be able to hear better. Because if I present you with something you're guilty of doing as me, I might go, well, I don't identify with you, but I identify with this person over here and they're right. Whereas when you get into the masks working with that, you people will tend to go, oh yeah, that was, what is that character doing? That's terrible. And then later when they're walking, go, oh, well, that's actually what I say. Hold on. Whoops. And so... It's, it can trick, right? And so it's sort of going again with what Lois was saying about the ritual and the blending and the 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 um, you can the ritual associate aspect and, versus theater. Yeah, you can associate and disassociate at the same time. Totally, right? <laughs> and so these mask mask is always working at two levels, always, yeah. and, and and multiple different ways of working on two levels, right? So we talk about. Um, it reveals and it conceals, right? So in the Comedia, uh, to go back to what I was supposed to talk about, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, <clears throat> to reveal and conceal is, is what's happening with a mask performer constantly because that mask is pulling something out of the performer and they're channeling something if they're doing it correctly, working with that mask correctly. And if it's a, a good mask, that mask is going to, it just demands the performer to go places and when you've worked in mask you'll come out at times and it's almost like coming out of a trance it truly is and you step out and people are like oh my gosh this part you did i don't i don't remember 
you, you sometimes just do not remember um, because you're you're in that and channeling that that spirit of that mask. Um, but then it's also concealing me. So my mask goes away. So it allows me to be this and reveal this other part of me and or the world um, that I don't normally do, right? So you're working at, at both those levels. But, you know, the thing that, uh, as we were talking prior to, to recording, um, the thing that's interesting to me right now is just as we're wearing the masks and who wears what and how, is the the plague masks that that throughout time we've always had a mask when we're dealing with health i mean you know in the hospitals they're wearing them all the time but but now here we are in this new plague and the mask is coming back um and the the you know the the old plague mask which was I don't know, Lois, maybe you know if it was based on the Zani. I mean, it looks like the Zani mask, but it had, you know, it had goggles. It was a full mask, almost like a gas mask, but it had this long beak like a bird that they would stuff with either incense or, or potpourri or sometimes they would burn like a camphor or something like that. And this was the idea that, you know, the doctors would wear these masks and they're, they were terrifying. I mean, you know, the whole doctor's garb with the black cape and the you know, you're just seeing that moving through the streets must have been something. Um, but they had the long mask and, and um, well, it and seems yeah. like it, and it, it commands authority now thinking about it is perhaps why because uh, the, the black robes would have come out of academia, and right? So that the doctors and any scholars wore those black robes, and so that right. might have just ended up being happenstance part of it and yeah but but to then assume that in the mask itself becomes it, it's i haven't done a lot into that but now i'm intrigued and i want I am to too because <laughs> now i'm like going oh because it is a very it's a it's a it is a, a scary striking, mask yeah, yeah. It's striking it's, and and yeah. and now i'm like oh well is that too part of scaring the evil spirit right is that still attached to that old ritual mm -hmm, yeah. you know um is it the, and you said the bird is it the raven which is connected with death or is yes. it but ravens are also uh incredibly clever and mm -hmm. in other world traditions raven is <laughs> is the trickster but also um that still one of those masks mm -hmm. between yeah um that helps to illuminate that mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I wanted to um, pivot over to you, Miriam. The the in the talking about revealing and concealing, and um, if you could talk a little bit about your your re recent project and the the decision to use masks, like how you decided that, and then also your approach to them as an artist. Um, because these weren't, this wasn't simply uh, some concealment that was done, you know, relatively simply. I mean, these were these beautiful embellished uh, masks that provided clues to people's identities, um, their personalities, their, their, their soulful inside. So just sharing. So I guess, I guess I kind of give a little bit of background first. So Wait. I am Mexican. I'm Mexican artist living here in Iowa. Uh, for me, the Lucha Libre uh, is something where I grew up. And for the ones that doesn't know, Lucha Libre is the type of wrestling uh, that happened in Mexico City, will happen in, around the world now. Uh, where the luchadores wear a mask uh, like this one to cover their identity. And uh, this mask I have in particular is actually a true professional wrestler uh, lucha mask. The uh, Latin Thunder is a Latino luchador who live in Muscat in Iowa. And this particular ma mask it's been um, played in 25 different matches. So I grew up 
with these beautiful masks, all colorful, where uh, the luchador create this character, and we're becoming a superhero. Uh, my superhero was El Santo, which is a silver mask. Um, and the type of commitment of a luchador uh, to wear a mask is like when El Santo died, he went to the tomb wearing his mask. Um, so for me, living here in Iowa, um, as, as a Latino and encounter another Latinos and realizing that we are living in a place where we have to be kind of like a double life, an invisible life, and, and a life where we have to wear a mask to be able to go outside and perform more jobs and take the heads down and just do whatever we need to be asked, asked to do. Um, it made me wondering how I can give the voice to these Latinos who are uh, living in these um, hard circumstances uh, and be able to give them voice without feeling be afraid of what they have to say it. So I've been working since the 2017 in the pro project Lucha Dores Immigrants in Iowa, utilizing the Lucha Libre Mass uh, to give voice to Latino immigrants in the state and creating a customized mask for these luchadores. And once I have the mask, which I create, uh, to have one over here. This is a customized mask uh, inspired by Lucha Libre mask, but this for one luchador. She is from Argentina. Her luchador name is Gracias a la Vida, which is thanks to life. And in this mask, um, I can like uh, create her persona persona through her true life and her experience as an immigrant. She's from Argentina, so for her in Che Guevara, it's an important um, character from her country. And um, these masks have violets in there because uh, Violeta Parra, it's a um, singer and songwriter from uh, Latin America who has a really a strong voice uh, in the activist world in, in Latin America. And she writes a um, beautiful poem and actually that poem is right on top of the mask. And in Che Guevara, I, I guess I have to explain the word lucha. The word lucha in Spanish means overcoming struggling but overcoming but also lucha is the name of the match so each match is a one lucha so in the latino world if you go to a march you will hear all the time lucha that's a word and the the, the hand in a fist it means um we are struggling and overcoming in the same time. We're fighting in this life. Uh, so that's why for me it was important to utilize this um, double meaning of the lucha as a, as a symbol for the project. And um, El Che Guevara say, uh, he say que, he say that um, la única lucha que se pierde is la que se abandona. The only lucha that you lost is the one that you abandon. So with this mask, I have um, the luchadores in Iowa wear the mask and I do like a video interviews. And the reason why I ended up utilizing this mask was because Back many years ago, I was trying to give voice to Latino immigrants. I was trying to record their voices, their stories, their amazing stories of these people who have struggling 
uh, like leaving everything behind, every single thing, and walking for miles and miles across different countries just to get to the border to have a chance to have a better life. Um, but by the time when I was had the camera in front of them, many of them they they just freeze and then they say, but they're gonna see my face. They're gonna know who I am. And when that moment happened, they just choose don't do anything and don't say anything and be quiet. So when I have the idea to utilize the mask to give him empower, um, that allow me, yeah, and allow them to empower themselves and, re and realize that we, by wearing the mask, no one will be able to recognize them and that allow them to really empower the true themselves and, and share it with the world. And it's really crazy because usually we'll think, you will think that one mask will cover you, like we was talking about, some masks are not, uh, are meant to hide. At uh, this mask was meant to empower and your true self just come out. And it's when you finally, when you're wearing this mask and you are allowing this space to tell your story, you feel the freedom of sharing what you've been through. So I think that's powerful. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's something that seems to be happening now with some people in terms of the masks that we have to wear, the PPE masks, because you can see people trying to express themselves. Um, some of them in the choice of fabrics that they, that they have um, pretty early on, people started to say, well, but you can't see me smiling. Um, and uh, it became really interesting, all of the problems that came with the mask, people in the African American community, um, black men saying, well, if I go in wearing a bandana or a mask, suddenly people think I'm trying to rob them. Yeah. Um, the, uh, you know, people rejecting certain kinds of fabric masks because it says, well, that looks like your grandmother and I need something different. I need something more useful. And now to me, I start to see so much more of these, just these black masks. Um, there's also this crazy thing about, you know, well, real men don't wear masks. And so I think in part, that's where some of these darker masks are all coming from. Which is hilarious because um, <laughs> I want to go, uh, I just want to say, <laughs> so yeah. let's go through history. What did you think of the Lone Ranger? Despite politics in the in the bet, mm -hmm. but you have the Lone Ranger, you have Superman, you have all your superhero figures wearing masks and masking identity. And then I go, okay, so if you're going to go on that route, but but if you go to these marches of gun rights and that, they're all wearing their bandanas and their masks. And so you're just masks, like, yeah. is it just because you're being told by mama and dad to wear your mask? Because that's really it, right? The authority figure telling you you have to wear it. You have to wear one. That we're gonna. That's my. You know. You're, you're, don't tread on me, you know? So it's really fat. That's, that's the fascinating part. And then, right. What's liberating. See, to me, I'm like, okay, I'm wearing my mask. I'm, I'm feeling a little more liberated. You know, I, I feel a little more at ease going out. Um, whereas when I don't have it, I feel naked now. I mean, how quickly that shifts. Yeah. It does feel like when you take the mask off, you suddenly come back to you and you feel a little naked and small. Well, and then last last night, so we're we're recording this um, the the day after a very very dark and long night, particularly in Minneapolis with very fiery protests, and and it it makes me think of your your double meaning of of lucha, if if I was getting that correctly, of 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 overcoming and and um, in a liberatory way but also in a battle and um and so it was like as these images were coming across the screen last night I, it's like you couldn't tell who was wearing a mask because of covid and who was wearing a mask to hide their identity or because of the smoke in the air it was like all of these different purposes for masks were all mm -hmm. coming together 
Did anybody yeah, else have that thought last night or? Not specifically last night, but there was a, an amazing photo um, essay in Time Magazine like a month ago showing mm -hmm. um, some of the Hong, Hong Kong young people mm -hmm. with masks on. And um, sometimes it was just cloth, uh, you know, around their faces and other times it, it was a mask. And um, I think that that wanting to express something once you're wearing that mask. Um, that, okay, I have to wear a mask. Well, I, I need to express still who I am behind that mask. Um, and maybe if people realized, as Miriam was saying, that you are actually can be empowered because you're being protective. You can actually be a superhero in your mask because you're protecting everyone else <laughs> and they're protecting you. And so let's all be superheroes together. But um, yeah, that, that mask is, and you know, that's concealing identity, but again, it can really do something to express who we are and what we mean and what we want to say. Um, but I just want to make a mask now with a peace sign on it, you know, I, <laughs> or justice or write something on it yeah. um, to make them much more, um, evocative and realize that you don't have to be, you know, because the other problem with the masks, of course, is that they silence. It's harder to talk, but you've got this, you've got this space you can use to yeah. say something. And yet it amplifies. Yeah. Right. So even the full masks in performance, you know, the, the, the sculpture is much larger. So it amplifies, even though you can't, the actor's voice is silenced, but then the body acts. You know, the body is is what speaks so i think you know and, and we were talking about this earlier you know it says a lot already whether you're wearing one or not wearing one right. and even if you're not wearing one you're wearing a mask you know we have our social mask we all have our social mask and there are many it's very complex and multifaceted depending upon who you're at your situation and all of that but you know we You've tend got to have your our, beard it's part mask totally <laughs> my choice to put my beard and how I sculpt my beard, you know, yep. I the only thing I don't get to choose is the gray, but that's, you know, <laughs> I could choose that. I could, I could get that. It says something. It says something. It says something, right? So all of it is a sculpture. All of it is, is how I, and we tend to try to shape this mask to where I feel empowered, or this is how I want the world to see me. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, you know, it's all tied into the same it goes back to the same roots. It really is about empowerment. And I think understanding, well, it's, it's many faceted, but just to try to understand the gods and how the world works, if we go all the way back to then, that's a sense of empowerment, right? Um, in my that visual, relationship. Yeah. That visual statement, um, to put on the other hat as the costume designer, you know, I, I'm always teaching my students that, um, there is no real reason why human beings, well, there's few reasons why human beings need to wear clothes, protect against the elements. That's sort of essentially the only one. Everything else is made up um, to specify gender, to attract the opposite sex, to show status, to show profession, to show all of those other things are all things that people have done to communicate who they are. And that goes into the mask. It's that visual communication. Um, and I think that came up in a lovely way in the mask that, that Miriam was showing to have Che there, to have the flowers there, to have that specific color. All of those things say something. And so there's real potential in those masks for people to really say something about who they are and something important and communicate that with other people and to have that connection with other people saying, this is who I am in this mask and who are you in your mask? It's giving me ideas now about a project to do, but. Uh. <laughs> well, and there's an interesting uh, thing floating around um, social media today or in the last few days based on um, another very current event of a white woman calling the police about a black yeah. man who was yeah. a bird watcher in, in uh, Central Park. 
And in this particular video, it's, um, it, it's a very, very close up of a, a black man. You can tell he has dreadlocks. And then it's, I mean, it's just, you know, from here, it's just his face. And he's going through and stating facts about himself. I'm a vegetarian. Um, I, I can't remember. I mean, you know, th I, I hate bananas. I, I'm just remembering that one because I was like, mm -hmm. I hate bananas. I don't know. But, it, but it, um, and then at one point you said, this is my brother, Bob. This is my brother, Jim. And these photos pop on and, and they're all different races. You know, so they're, they're, they're um, an adoptive family. And so it's all these things that are just meant to puncture your, somebody's, presumptions about as you're saying paul the mask that we are all always wearing and and so it's like in that case it's like if somebody were to create a mask for him that would say all these things that he's saying in this video like you know if miriam you were to design something and if we are all able to sort of walk around in that way that was signaling like hey i am this whole universe yeah 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 the mask performance we call it the contra mask right so a mask has a uh, tends to have a primary it's depending upon what style right if it's an emotive mask a primary emotion say but then you have the contra mask which is the complete opposite and then gradations within that and um and it's really important to have both of those. So you have a balanced uh, approach to, to the work and that, the, that all facets of that mask can then be played. Um, it's, uh, it's all of us, you know, mm -hmm. we have our contra masks. Miriam, so I'm, I'm curious, the, as this combination of artist and, and activist, are, are you, thinking through any masks that you want to create? Are you making your own masks right now? Or are you just wearing uh, standard it, so issues? I am making my own mask, but the thing it is, um, I know been confined because I'm actually have to work. Uh, my day job is the uh, work and new kind of job is actually been buying groceries for other people's online. Um, if I remember correctly, I actually put together some Joy's, um, Lois yeah. orders too. Yes. So, <laughs> so basically what I'm saying is that when all this thing is started, I am considered what is like essential worker. So I have to make sure, we have to make sure people get food to their tables. So the first early March when uh, all this thing has started um, um, when I see people wearing a mask um, my first thought was like oh they're being exposed so they have to try to keep themselves um, safe so for other people's styles will be safe but by the time when we also have to all have to be wear masks um, because it was not mandatory, but it was optional. I had to wear a mask because my first thing I realized is that I touch my face too much. So I had to wear the gloves and the mask just for me to teach my body to stop touching my face. So every time when I see the blue glove here, it's like, oh no, I'm, I'm reaching my face, so stop it. And every time when I when I cross it and I feel the fabric in front, it's like I'm touching my face. So the first, I will say the first two weeks, um, to wear a mask for a lot of night hours, uh, it was crazy. Uh, first, the two first days is like, I cannot breathe. It was so hot, it's a lot of stress levels. Um, just by wearing the mask and being there and knowing that you have to be so careful of everything that you touch that you have to be washing your hands constantly it just creates a really high level of stress but also knowing that you have to serve others and that you have to protect yourself but also have to protect the rest and you really go to like a 
I will don't say cuckoo, but I think it's a little bit cuckoo, the things that you, the feel that you're becoming crazy just by thinking. Uh, I'm thinking in, in touching things and having a reaction, like when people give me money, for example, something simple like give me money in their belly hands, they go into my glove. I felt like, please, can you put the money on the counter so I can grab it? And it's not just because thinking I will ex they will be exposed to me, but it's more like I'm been here touching many other things. And even if I change so many times gloves, I never know if when is the moment when that tiny microvirus is going to be in that glove and I'm gonna share it with you. And I don't wanna have that. Um, I don't want to be the one who give you that. Mm -hmm. So I've been very careful with that and that sometimes I feel like I react like, please, just place them on a, and that simple reaction of seeing someone wearing a face and telling you, please don't, don't give me your money when you hand, just place it in there. Some people take it as an insult. Mm -hmm. And I just, it just create another level of understanding it's not just we have to wear the mask to give us protection, but also try to wear a mask to to try to portray like, you know, it's like I'm trying to be safe and I, I'm smiling behind this mask, mm -hmm. even if you cannot see it. Um, and I'm just trying to protect you too. So yes, I've been doing my mask. I made a bunch of masks to give away uh, it breaks my heart to see so many uh, seniors that they don't have uh, access to computers. And I just basically was making masks and just giving it away to this. Uh, everyone, when I see someone who was asking for one, I just give it to them. I still making masks, but at this moment, I'm just been living in survival mode. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like you say, the creativity comes. Yes, the creativity comes, but at this moment, I think everything's become like really basic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've been trying to do some math. I have some really cool ideas, uh, but I think we are living in a moment with the math. Despite they can give us the empowerment to be safe, and be near each other it also was bring us back to time where we need to take five priorities mm -hmm. and our priority is stay alive and um, help others to be able to continue communicating and continue have a social relationship but in a safe way mm -hmm. So yes, I do have a bunch of ideas in my brain, but now I hear in the University of Iowa saying the just by wearing the shield, uh, it give you uh, enough protections. So we are moving probably to the shield. Very soon you will start to see a lot of people with the shield and uh, which it allows you to breathe. I don't know how the doctors, to, to be sincere, are the doctors and the nurses and everyone is doing it because I wear a mask between eight hours to nine hours every day. And, but this time now I feel more comfortable with it. Uh, I do feel the same thing with you, like uh, when you don't wear it, you feel like, my, I feel like my pores and my face become very sensitive. When I take the mask out, I can totally feel like the wind blowing in every single of my little hairs. Um, so it's it's interesting to see how we're gonna move forward as a society, as an artist, uh, to keep creating and and utilizing this new form of life. Because I I don't know about you, but the way how I see it is whatever we call normal before, it's gone. Mm. So now we are re readjusting to what we call the new normal. And the new normal is definitely wearing a mask. And 
perhaps many people are not wearing masks. I'm really surprised. Uh, uh, I, I work at New Pioneer Coop and in New Pioneer Coop is mandatory to wear a mask to be able to shop at the store. Uh, but I know they, in another business, they are not doing that practices. And I've been like um, driving around and a lot of, I see a lot of places where the mask is not important. Mm -hmm. uh, they're people, they just don't care about it. Yeah. And so we have to redefine what will be the new normal and what is going to be the future of us as a community to be able to to be together in a safe way. So, which is interesting because that's the the mask, anyways, right? Yeah. That is yeah. that has been the that's been the point of the mask forever. How do we be together? And it's the masks that find the ways to bring us together. Yeah. Yeah. And how do you us. how do you communicate? So yeah. So, so we're it's such a thing of communication, and so it, but it's like. Um, I, yeah, I just encourage people to, to think of it more as something, a way that you can communicate, even though you're also wearing it. Mm -hmm. and, and also realize that, you know, we've been talking about mass performance and both Paul and Miriam have said that you need to, to sort of have it on and wear it and get used to it and realize what you need to do. I mean, I found myself, um, I made a couple of masks and then went, oh, wait a minute, I need to make some more because it, this fabric is too heavy or I needed to do this and I need the elastic to go there and all of these things to continuously find a better way to, to wear that mask, but also find a way to communicate with that mask. Mm -hmm. Well, we need to close, but thank you so much. And I have a feeling that all three of you will think of incredibly creative ways to comment on this period. And so I, I, I'll be watching for, for future endeavors, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you everyone.